This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the last of three lectures on divisional performance measurement. First lecture, I talked about what we meant by divisions and so on. In the second one, I explained, hopefully, uh, return on investment with digital income to performance measures. Uh, this one uh, will only be brief, but the last bit, uh, last space on the note is reasons for using return on investment or um, residual income. And as I've typed there, as I said on the last lecture, uh, the reason for using re residual income, subject to other things I might mention, it is, I'm not sure it's perfect English here, but technically superior, in the sense that uh, it leads to goal congruent decisions. Oh, those two little examples make the point there. Uh, on the other hand, return on investment is far more common in practice. Uh, and the reason is um, that it's more easily understandable Uh, because it's like return on capital employed. Now, it may seem a poor reason, you know, return, uh, residual income isn't uh, difficult arithmetically, but people are managers who matter, and more li uh, they're likely to already have heard of return on capital employed, and it's immediately fairly obvious logic, profit percent of uh, investment. Uh, residual income confuses and worries people. Uh, it, it, you know, it, unless they have a lecture on it, it does seem rather odd. Um, so that's a real reason. It, it becomes more popular, to be perfectly honest. But uh, a couple of other things. Uh, where, what can be a problem with residual income, if you're comparing divisions. You know, not all divisions are going to be the same size, obviously. Some divisions might be very small, so the small investment, but small profitability, and the division's a lot bigger. Well, the trouble with residual income, one division uh, has a residual income of a thousand, uh, but it's terribly profitable in terms of percent profitability. There's very little investment in it. Another division is 20 times bigger and it has a residual income of 5,000, but it's not really valid to compare them. So if you're comparing divisions, uh, return on investment does make more sense. It's better when comparing divisions. Of different sizes. Uh, finally, I won't go on, but uh, one thing I always think is a little bit stupid, but uh, it's been mentioned in exam answers, is that although I had to deliberately make up figures for example two, which showed how return on investment can be a problem, of course it's not always a problem. And although I think, personally, it's a bit of a silly statement, um, Return on investment usually doesn't lead to a loss of goal congruence. You know, people say, well, if it doesn't, if it's not very often a problem. If you don't very often get situations like example two, uh, why bother doing something that looks rather unusual, residual income? So there we are, I mean, um, those are all real reasons why, in real life, it does tend to be a uh, return on investment. Despite the fact, certainly for a one-off, like my examples, 
uh, residual income gaps is the one we should use. Uh, anyway, as far as the exam is concerned, obviously you do what you're told. Sometimes they ask for residual income, sometimes to return the investment, sometimes both. Uh, and of course, if it is there in section C, which it could uh, be, there'd inevitably be some writing. So make sure you were happy with the um, my talk bits at the beginning and again just now.